Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in God's house. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're thankful to have each one of you here, and we're looking forward to a good service. And uh, we normally wait to, to do announcements till the end, but I wanted this to get across our live stream uh, service uh, for today. Um, we're looking forward to today's service, and we're also looking forward to next week. And uh, if you're able to be here next week at 1045, we would encourage you to be here. Uh, Kevin Spencer, gospel singer Kevin Spencer, will be here in concert. It's a free event. Uh, he'll be doing our morning worship service at 1045, ministering in song and testimony. So we invite everybody to come out next Sunday for uh, Kevin Spencer. Looking forward to that. And uh, we're thankful that we're able to have him and that his schedule opened up and we, he was able to be here. But today we're looking forward to uh, the Lord meeting with us. You know, it's exciting to have guests, but church should be exciting every week because we have somebody way more important than Kevin Spencer, and he'd tell you that himself. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we're here to worship him today. And uh, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, there he'll be also. So I believe he's here today, don't you? Yeah. Amen. I know we have many that are out today due to illness, or uh, I know um, we have several that they had some friends of the family pass away, and they had to go to the funeral today, and so they're not here, and some other things that are uh, prohibiting people from being here. But we're thankful that God will meet with us wherever we are. And if you're, if you're watching from home today, would you worship with us? As we pray together, as we sing together, as we learn God's word together, you would worship with us. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and maybe you have a, a request you'd like to make known by an upper raised hand. There's so many and so many things that are going on in our midst. And we're thankful, though, that God is answering prayer. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We ask God that you would be with each need that was represented. We thank you for those that uh, even this week were, were sick and battling illness and they're here today and you've raised them up and we're thankful for that. We pray that you would be with each and every need. We pray that you would be with the service today that your spirit would undertake. And Lord, we pray also that you would be with um, the service next, next week, that it would be a special time. And we thank and we praise you. Be with those that are traveling today and protect them and bring them back to us safely. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are blessed today, amen? Amen. amen. Oh, wait, let me try that again. We're blessed today, amen? Amen. amen. I am blessed, I am blessed, every day that I live I am blessed, when I wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed, I am blessed, through the sunshine and rain, even sorrow and pain, Jesus still is my comfort and my guide. And his love comforts me, and his grace is set me free. And someday I shall stand by his side. I am blessed, I am blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed, I am blessed. I have shoes on my feet, I have plenty to eat, and a home up in heaven by and by. Brothers and sisters on this earth, they are mine by my new birth, and we shall share in that home beyond the sky. I am blessed, I am blessed, every day that I live, I am blessed. When 
I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. Amen. But there is one God and one mediator between us, between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave his blood as a ransom for all. To be testified in due time. We are blessed today because of the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we could have a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Now, I grew up singing this old hymn, and uh, there's a lot of places I've sung it, and they sing it really slow. Did you know it wasn't written that way? <laughs> it's a hymn of rejoicing. And, uh, the first verse, I think on the screen it says, um, for sinners such as I, the original was for such a worm as I. So I may sing that by accident. Well, accidentally on purpose. And uh, if you want to, aren't you glad to have your hymn books back? It's on 190 if you want to look in your hymn book. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would He devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crime that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. The burden of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well, might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glory down when Christ of The burden of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day it was there by faith I received my sight Amanda is that the last one? 
She just looked at me and shrugged her shoulders. Go back to the chorus. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Now you might have wondered why that I kept doing rolled away. Well, it's written. If you're looking in your hymn book, that's written there. And years ago, my dad was not a singer, but they had a Christmas dinner and him and another guy got up and they sang this song. I was shocked. But when they got to roll the way, I heard my daddy's voice pretty plainly go, roll the way. And everybody kind of looked and I asked him why he did it. He said, it's written there. And that's true. But if you're thankful that the stone of sin and death has been rolled away from your heart. You can shout rolled away too. Let's sing that chorus again. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I ever found comes like a flood that's flowing down. At the cross, at the I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin was white. I owe it all to you. I owe it all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. For all the love I've ever found. Comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white. Oh, hey. Oh, it all. 
I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white. Oh, it all to you. Oh, it Owe it all to you, owe it all to you, Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet. The sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace. My fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope secure. He will my shield and portion me as long as life endures. My chains are gone. I've been saved. Soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Will be forever. Forever mine. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love. Amazing grace. And like his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace God he is so good God he is so good God he is so good He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me.
cares for me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. And I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good. all the time and all the time oh let's try that again God is good all the time and all the time amen I stood in the courtroom the judge turned my way it looks like you're guilty now what do you say i spoke up your honor i have no defense but that's when mercy walked in mercy walked in pleaded my case and called to the stand and God saving grace the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked I stood there and wondered how could this be someone so guilty had just been set free my chains were broken I felt born again the moment that mercy walked in Mercy walked in and pleaded my case and called to the stand. God saving grace, the blood was presented that covered my sin, forgiven when mercy walked in. The blood was presented, the forgive covered my sin, forgiven when mercy walked in. Say amen. Thankful for what God is doing, right? And uh, I am just uh, thrilled uh, about what God is doing. I'm looking forward to the things upcoming, Easter coming up. It's always a great season in the church, and so thankful for the empty tomb. Amen. And then, of course, the concert next week, looking forward to that. Um, but what I'm really looking forward to is right now the moment when we open God's Word that is living and active and can change our hearts and minds. If you came in discouraged today, you can leave encouraged. If you came in lost, you can leave found. And if you came in disgruntled, you can leave 
with a happy and renewed spirit because of the grace of God. Amen? How many of you have said in the past or have heard someone say, that's not fair? Oh, boy, if you've got siblings, if you've got brothers and sisters, you probably said that at least once a day. But that's not fair, right? How many of you have ever said that? Yeah, that's not fair. How many of you have uh, maybe, well, I might be stepping on some toes, but how many of you might have been at a game especially a game that involves your babies or your grandbabies. And there's a call made on them, and you probably say a little more than that's not fair, right? Some of you just about come unglued, right? Oh, y'all look at... I love how everybody looking real sanctified, like, mm -mm, we don't, we don't ever do that. But we've all had those feelings where we feel like life is not fair. Well, buckle up, because I've got a truth for you that might just rattle you a little bit. And when I discovered it, it rattled me. Life is not fair. I know, let it sink in. The big buzzword today is equality and equity, and we want everything to be equal and fair, but it's not. You know why? Oh, we can blame uh, social class, we can blame this group or that group, but I'm going to tell you who the blame is. It's the devil and sin. That's why things are not fair. Uh, that's why life is not fair. But what do we do about an unfair life? How do we handle that? Because I don't know about you, but my heart breaks when I see somebody mistreated. When they're not treated what we would say fairly, right? And I'm going to put this in for free. I believe God's people should stand up for injustice. And people that are not being treated fairly or the unborn that are not being stood up for. Well, this side's got it. Let's come over here. I believe that we should stand up for groups that are disenfranchised and are wrongly put down. Yeah. Now, I could go on to a lot of things, but I'm going to stick to the Word of God today. But we're going to do something a little different. Normally, you have to wait a little bit before we get to the illustration, but I want to start today like I normally start our youth group on Zoom. We usually start with a game. We're going to do a game today. Does anybody want to play a game? Anybody want to? It's one person. Okay, India, come on. Boy, she was quick to raise that hand. She knows not what she asketh. All right. Now, the rules to this game are very simple. I know you can count, so this is going to be really easy. I know you can count. I know you can count. All right. Now, here's the game. I'm going to pick a number between 1 and 20. Okay? If, and you just have one guess. If you guess the number, you get a prize. If you don't guess the number, then I douse you. You ready? Okay. No. <clears throat> 1 through 20. You ready? Go. 15. Wrong. Now, I said I'd douse you, right? I didn't say with what. I hope I don't spill this. <clears throat> now, you got it wrong. And I should douse you. It's fair, but life's not fair. And you know what? You didn't deserve it, but I'm going to give you the prize anyway. Nice. 
You see, it wasn't fair at all, was it? What I just did, did she deserve the candy? Did she win? No. Some of y'all are like, yes, she just deserves it because she's cute and everybody's a winner. No. Did she deserve it by the rules of the game? Absolutely not. That's grace. She did not deserve it, but yet she got it. That's grace. I didn't know this when I picked the prize in. Did she? I handed them to her. She goes, my favorite. So you just added to the illustration because she didn't know what the prize was. She thought she had lost it. When she got it, she realized, it's my favorite. You see, that's grace. That's God's grace. See, with God's people, we have been given grace. Amen? Let's look at Acts chapter 4 today. And it's quite a lengthy reading, but I, I want you to get the point. Remember, as we looked at Acts 4 a few weeks ago, um, the lame man was healed, and then Peter and John uh, were brought and faced opposition because they were doing what God called them to do. And that story continues. They're still facing opposition. But look at how they handled it. Acts 20. Because they told them, quit that. Quit speaking. Quit talking. Quit telling people about Jesus. Did you know that um, there is coming a time, even in this country, where we'll get there probably. We're already seeing some minor uh, dust-ups with people. I wouldn't even call it persecution because it's just, you know, well, because you believe this, we're not going to do this. And, and, and things are ramping up. But there is opposition, and he says, but we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. When you experience Jesus, you can't help but tell about it. You know what? I bet India, when she goes to her friends She's going to tell them while she's eating that candy, and she may share, but while she's eating that candy, she goes, you know how I got this? We played a game, and I lost, and I still got it. She's going to tell about it. She can't help it because she experienced it. Right? When we come in contact with Jesus, we cannot help but share the grace that we have been given. Now, sometimes we forget that, don't we? Oh, thank you. I, we got one honest person over here in the corner said a lot of times. Yeah, I think we would all agree with that, right? It said, but when they had further threatened them, hold up. So they kept threatening them, let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people, for all men glorified God for which that they had seen which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom the miracle of the healing was showed. So they healed a man and he was above 40 so they knew that he had had that for many years. This wasn't a fly-by-night illness. This was something It was truly a healing. And they wanted to punish these men for healing them. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who is by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth, against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever they had hand and thy counsel, to, counsel determined to be done. And now the Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that which all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thy hand to heal, that the signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, 
and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them the aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. You see that? And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and bought the prices of things that were sold. And they laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according to as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is by being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now I know that's a lot. But they were given great grace to accomplish what God had called them to do because they could not stop what they had seen and heard. When we have truly been saved and repented of our sin and asked Jesus to come into our life and we realize that what we deserved was hell, what we deserve is eternal punishment, what we deserve is busted up families, what we deserve is all the consequences of our sin, and yes, there still may be some consequences, but God's great grace gave us eternal life when we accept it. Do we deserve it? Absolutely not. Can we get it? Yes, that's grace. And the apostles were given great grace. And when we have great grace and we remind ourselves that we have been through much is given, much is required, and we have grace, what happened to them? By great grace, they were confident in prayer. They were confident in prayer. When they all got together, no big eyes and little U's. They all prayed together and they realized that they were in one accord. They were in one mind, one body. You know, we hear that one accord and I don't know about you, my mind goes to the joke about, you know, what type of car did the disciples drive? An accord. Right? But when you think of that, an accord, I know it's a bad joke, but it's a good point. Follow me. An accord, a vehicle, if we're all riding in the same vehicle, we're all together, right? We're all going to the same place. And we're all in the same mindset. Right? Now, we all may do different things till we get there, but we're all of the same mind to get there, right? How many of you remember, especially if you have children, going on vacation? And, and especially if it was a place you had never been before. And you were all excited, right? Now, the, the driver was probably the least excited. But still excited, right? And if you were like my daddy, you didn't stop till we got there. You know, and, and then you got out and bragged how fast you made it. You know, going to a family outing or something, and everybody meets up, everybody pulls in the driveway, and they get out. You know how it is. Hey, Bill, how you doing? I made it in four hours and 13 minutes. How'd you do? Well, we had to stop a couple times. Oh, we didn't. We ate in the car. The kids went out the window, and we just kept going. But we're all of one cord, one mind. We all want to get to the same destination. When we all get together and go on the church bus and go somewhere, we all go on the same destination. When we are in Christ, we're all going to the same place. We're all going to heaven. And here's the beautiful thing. The bus to heaven has a lot of seats in it. And I want everybody to go with me. And if we're of one mind, guess what? We are in the same goal, and when we're going in the same place, we're praying in the same goal. When we have prayer meeting on Wednesday night, did you know all of it is really to the same goal? It is. 
We got a child that's sick that's not saved. We, Lord, heal them and touch them. Or, or reveal yourself to them in the sickness so they can get saved. And if something bad does happen to them, they'll go to be with you and then we'll see them on the other side. Amen? Uh, Lord, this church, is this one particular church we've been praying for, they're struggling. So, Lord, help them so they can fulfill the mission that God has called them to do. Or, uh, uh, Lord, just rebuke the enemy in this situation because we want God to be glorified so that people will see that. And then they realize that there's one way to heaven that Jesus is still the king of kings and they'll go too I don't know about you but my job and all of our job as a church is to make sure we can take people to glory as possible oh would I love to pack this church amen yes would I love to see them you know we got to stand them in the aisle put them up in the back Amanda wouldn't care if she had four or five people up in the sound booth with her. She's going, yeah, bring them on. As long as they don't touch no buttons up there, she's all right. But we'd love to see it full, wouldn't we? Why? So we could say, boy, look at the church house. Don't it look good that it's full? No. If we're of the same mind, it's not, ooh, look who's starting to come. Mm. I know what they make. Maybe they put a little, no. It's about, hey, are they saved? If they're not, let's help them and show them Jesus. And if they're not, if they are saved, let's encourage them so they don't get discouraged and back up and backslide. And let's all go together to heaven. I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad, are you? But great grace allows us to have powerful prayers. Because when there's no eyes and little use and we don't have any of this self-righteous prayer when we all realize that, hey, I'm just one beggar telling another beggar where to get the bread. The bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. And guess what? My prayer it, it just avails as much as yours. If you're saved and you talk to Jesus, guess what? He hears your prayer. Let me tell you something. It's not all the these and thous and all the, the wording, but a person that has a heart that is pure and sincere and loves the Lord and they pray, give me that prayer anytime. Anytime. Great grace is confident in prayer. And then, do you see what they did? They didn't back down. Great grace also in the next couple verses, tells us that they have courageous character. They, they, they don't back down. They love people, but they are not going to back down when, when the forces of evil rise against them. Hey, we ain't going nowhere. Right? I'm, I've often been reminded of that great cinematic masterpiece of the early or mid-80s, Ernest Goes to Camp. Some of y'all look like you never heard of it. The others of you looking like a cinematic masterpiece. Anyway, if you've never seen the movie, it's about this bumbling, wonderful person named Ernest P. Worrell who works at a summer camp, and he ends up taking over as a counselor, and he's not good at it. But he tries. And there's some people that come in and try to take the camp away. And it was built on an old Indian reservation, and there's this Bill Iron Eyes Cody is the old Indian chief, and he doesn't speak much English, and he got tricked into selling the land. And so Ernest feels that he has got to fight for the camp. And he gets his boys, who are just freshly out of juvenile detention, to fight for the camp. Now, I'm going somewhere. And there's this great scene at the there toward the end where the Indian chief has the war paint and he's hey, and he's putting the paint on the boys and they're standing there and there's Ernest standing there tall and the people at the camp are telling him no Ernest don't do this don't do this and he says with gritted teeth they ain't gonna get this camp hey, they ain't gonna get this camp Hey, they ain't going to get this camp. Well, you know what? 
We have more than the great spirits of the Indian forefathers that were nothing more than evil spirits. We've got the spirit of the living God living in us that He's already designed us, given us the armor to put on that as we stand against the wiles of the enemy, we can stand and say, hey, they ain't going to take this church. It's not the building, but it's the people. Right? Do you remember the little game you used to, used to play as kids? Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, and here are all the people. Well, forget the church, forget the steeple. It's not about the building, it's about all the people that have been designed and destined for a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And when we accept that and we get on mission, then great grace fills our life. And we not only receive it, we give it. And we can stand with boldness just as they did and say, they ain't going to take this body and we're standing up for Jesus. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited, don't it you? God is working, and we must, as people of God, show the grace that we've been given. See, our human nature is, well, that wasn't fair. Now, I'm not saying that we need to be spiritual doormats, that people just walk on us, but we, through much grace that has been given us, we should be a church and a people of grace. Amen? Something I'm working on. And, 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 and we do it many times, and we don't even realize it. Uh, but sometimes we can have, well, I can have, I won't put it on you. But if you're honest, you might grab it and put it on yourself. We can sometimes have a tone, and we don't mean it, but it just comes across kind of harsh, doesn't it? Because we're passionate about what we believe and what we think and you know, and somebody doing something crazy, we're like, hold up. Well, Lord, help us to live this scripture and help me to live the scripture that my mouth be seasoned with grace. That doesn't mean that it's just like, well, you just do what you want to do. No, it's not that at all. See, we, we, we've taken the, the God of grace and made him some mealy-mouthed savior. No, Jesus is strong and mighty. He bore a cross. He was a carpenter. I don't know if you've been around many young carpenters in your life, but they're, they're rough and tough. They got muscles. And that's old school carpentry. They didn't have no power tools. But the God that came to be a man was not some weak Savior. He was the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He could have stopped it if he wanted to, but he was submissive to the Father's will. And when we're submissive to the Father's will, we get great grace. There will be tragedy. There will be trouble. But we will have grace to endure it, and we'll have the reward in the end that we did nothing to deserve or earn. Great grace will make us courageous doesn't mean that you have to be loud. It just means you're courageous. Have you ever seen somebody that's real shy go up and talk to somebody about the Lord? I have. I have friends that are pastoring now that if you were to talk to their teachers, flunked projects, and actually one of them I know flunked a whole public speaking class because he was too shy to get up and talk in front of people. And now he preaches. Why? Because God's grace changed him. Yeah. Well, I just can't talk about it. That's not what it's about. When you allow God's grace to propel you, then he will give you great courage to do what he's called you to do. See, grace is not earned. I know there's a lot of things that try to cheapen grace. But God's grace is not cheap. It cost his son his life. And it's not to be handled cheaply. There's a lot of
teaching out there that we can just kind of do what we want and God will wink at it. No. Because when we experience God's grace, we don't want to do anything that will disappoint the Father. We might, but we don't do it intentionally. You with me? We use the grace that's been given, not as a license to sin, but to propel us to do what God has called us to. I spent uh, several years as a truant officer, so I was in and out of court quite often. And I didn't know this because I was new to it when I first started, but all the other truant officers didn't like me from the other districts. And I didn't know why. And they said, it's not fair. I said, here we go again. What's well, not fair? Well, what I didn't know is I thought this was the process. I would go before, they would always call me in before, before the kid, before the parents of the kid. And I would meet with the judge by myself. I thought that's the way it happened. Did you know it's not? And the judge would say, Mr. Bridges, what do you want to do? Now, I had to exercise some grace there, right? But I ended up having favor with the judge, and I believe God did that. But you know what I never saw, ever? I never saw a judge, even though I had favor and grace with them, I never saw them in the middle of a trial, and I've actually served on juries as well, so I've seen other trials, not just juvenile court, I've seen other trials, I've never seen a judge who says, what's the verdict, they say guilty, let's say of murder, and the judge says, okay, you're guilty of murder, the sentence is death, but I've never seen a judge unzip his robe, take it off, step down off the bench, and say, I'll take the punishment. I've never seen that because that's not natural. But that's what God did for us. He zipped off his robe of righteousness and judgment, stepped down from heaven, became a man, and when God said, you're guilty of sin and you're separated from me, Jesus said, I'll take the punishment. That's grace. The blood of of Calvary and of Jesus Christ saves me and saves you if you accept it. And when you do, then you will be confident in prayer and confidence in prayer breeds boldness in faith. So as God's people, let us be bold. Amen? And let grace propel us. Maybe we've forgotten where God brought us from. Maybe we need to think back a little bit. I'm not saying dwell in it. Just think about it for a minute. Right? Because we've been given such great grace. You've been given such great grace. May you accept it today. May you repent of your sin and ask Jesus to come into your life. And if you're living in grace land, if you're living in the land of grace, then may you be that to the world. You see, I know if you all travel to another state, and if I travel, I've traveled so much, it's harder for me now, but it's easier if you don't, if you haven't traveled a lot or if you have a strong one of these. But haven't, how many of you have ever been to a place that you're not from? People say, where are you from? You talk different, right? Where are you from? You talk different. We were somewhere just a few days ago, and there were, I don't even remember where now, uh, and there was a lady, I was in Walmart, I believe, there was a lady talking to these two other ladies, and you could tell the two other ladies were not from here. They were from Canada. And uh, the lady said, we, we just knew you were from somewhere different because you don't talk like us. And they said, well, we, we love the way you talk. They said, well, we love the way you talk. See, when we live in a certain area, 
We talk different. We, we represent that area, right? Or uh, if you've ever noticed, a lot of people that come from certain areas kind of favor each other. They look alike because they live in a certain area. They're in a certain environment, right? If, if, if you live down in a, in a sunshine state in the south, you see a lot of tans, right? If you live up north with a lot of snow, you don't. Unless they go and lock themselves in a box with lights in it. And, you know, I, if that's your thing, go right ahead. I'm not going to do it because I've decided Jesus light up my life, not some box. But the point I'm making is this. When we're from somewhere, we exhibit the characteristics of that place. When we are experiencing God's grace and we're living in Graceland, and I'm not talking about Elvis' house, when we're living in the grace that God has given us, we will exhibit it and we'll look like grace. We'll look like we've been with Jesus. Right? I don't know about you, but I've gone to places at times after church. They say, You've been to church today, haven't you? Because they know we've been around the saints. He can tell. Right? And let us carry the grace with us. It works the other way too. Oh, you, you go home after you've been to Walmart, people usually know you've been there. But, yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. But when we experience God's grace, then we begin to look like the character of the one who gave us the grace. Amen? May you experience his grace this week. If you've never experienced it, may you do that as you're watching today. We appreciate you watching. May you accept Jesus as your Savior and let him change your life. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus, I would encourage you to do that. If I could do it for you, it had already been done. Or maybe you're just kind of discouraged and you see things happening around you don't understand it. May the grace of God comfort you today. Amen. We're going to pray, play a song again.